Hey there guys, I thought I'd make a video giving you guys my thoughts on this upcoming light heavyweight title fight between Dimitri Bivol and former champion John Pascal. Um, you know, when I heard this fight was happening, I wasn't excited at all, because to be honest guys, um, I'm just going to sum it up. This fight is a flipping mismatch. I, I only see this fight going one way. Um, I think Dimitri Bivol is going to dominate. And I, mean, and I mean completely and utterly obliterate Jean Pascal. Uh, I think he's going to completely outbox him. Um, I mean, when you compare... Let, let, let's forget that the fact that Jean Pascal is in his late 30s and is, you know, coming off a very hard, grueling career where he's had many devastating defeats. Let, let's ignore that for now and let's just look at this fight stylistically. Dimitri Bivol fundamentally is on another level to Jean Pascal, just in terms of fundamental boxing skills. Pascal is one of these fighters, you know, he's an ambush fighter, he's a guy who has very low stamina, and doesn't have a whole lot of skill or defense, doesn't have great technique, but he's a guy who's very fast, he's a guy who punches hard, and he's a guy who's quite sudden, so he'll fight with his hands down, he'll linger around on the outside, he won't do much during the round, but he'll, he'll jump in and he'll try and make his attacks count. You know, he'll commit to every attack. And he's, you know, he's got that Adonis Stevenson, David Hay vibe about him where, you know, he, he tries to conserve his energy, doesn't like to waste punches. And, you know, j just tries to, tries to fight in spurts, you know, fights in bursts. And hopefully he either knocks you out or steals the ends of the rounds and things like that. You know, he's that type of fighter, Pascal. And when you compare that to someone like Bevel, Bevel's a guy who's very fundamental, he's a guy who's, you know, he's an orthodox, he's got a tight guard, he's got a very good jab, very good right hand, he's got high work rate, throws a lot of punches, um, you know, he, he really works everything off that jab quite well, he's got very good straight punches, you know, he's got a, a solid straight right hand that he can land from halfway across the ring, which he has taken guys out with. So, um, you know, he's a completely different fighter to Pascal. He's a guy who's got solid fundamentals and is a solid boxer who's got good balance, good defense, shown a pretty good chin in his career so far. And just, I, I don't see this being a competitive fight at all. I don't even see Pascal winning a round, to be honest. I, I don't see this being even a fight that's even even that worth talking about. And, and it, it really makes you wonder why Pascal is being selected as the opponent because I really don't see what, Dimitri Bivol has to gain from this fight. I mean, if he beats Pascal, so what? I mean, Elidia Alvarez, um, Sergei Kovalev already convincingly beat Jean Pascal. So, yeah, I really don't see the point in this fight. Um, I guess it, it is a chance to get a name on Bivol's resume, but if I'm being honest, guys, you know, having having Jean Pascal on your resume, I, I just don't, I don't get it. I don't see what it does for Bivol. But either way, I think that how the fight's going to go, I think Bevo's going to box behind the jab. I think he's going to take the center of the ring. I think Pascal is, you know, he knows his only chance in this fight is to try and land a, you know, a big haymaker at some point. You know, try and land a lucky punch. Um, and, and he doesn't have the stamina to box or engage with Bevo for 12 rounds. So Pascal, being a smart veteran, he's going to probably try and sort of old man his way through the fight. You know, try and just you know, make Beevil overextend and, and just try and land something. But that, that's all he can do in this fight. That's all you can really expect. And I think that the younger, quicker, stronger, more powerful and more athletic Beevil will probably stop Jean Pascal. So I'm picking Beevil to win by stoppage. If he doesn't stop Jean Pascal and if he doesn't dominate him, then I will not be I will not be impressed. Put it that way. If if Beevil doesn't do the do a job on Sean Pascal, then there's questions to be asked about his potential and his ability. So, another thing I wanted to talk about, and I actually recorded a video about this the other day, but I, I'm I'm not going to upload the video. I, I deleted the audio because it just it just didn't turn didn't turn out how I wanted it. I want to talk about how Dimitri Bivol's career is has been progressing and why I'm not really that impressed with the way he's been handled and the way he's been managed. I don't think it's going to work out in the long run. What what I basically talked about was I, I was I wanted to talk about how Dimitri Bivol and he he won the world title last year. He had a, a very very um, impressive performance. He had a first round knockout against Trent Broadhurst when he was first elevated to champion, and um, I was I was very impressed by that performance. I remember after watching it, I thought this guy's gonna go far. You know, this guy's 
really one to watch from the future, but he's fallen into that exact same trap that so many Russian fighters fall into, so many Eastern European fighters, is that he's fighting in America on shitty undercards, like, you know, cards that nobody gives a fuck about, fighting on Sergei Kovalev's undercards with some shitty promoter in America, and his career's going nowhere. You know, he's not building up his name, he's not building up his fan base, um, you know, he's he's not building up his market value, he's just fighting pointless opponents on pointless cards in America where nobody gives a fuck about him. What he should be doing, in my opinion, and I know some of you guys are going to say, oh, well, you know, it'll take all, he, he won't be getting the paydays that he's getting. I mean, some of these fighters... They they don't think long term, do they? They always tr they always thinking, oh, let's get a quick payday, let's fight in America, we'll we'll get a pay per view fight or something, and we'll be able to retire. But by going that route and by fighting in America and trying to market yourself in America, you're never gonna grow your home fan base. Um, you're never gonna be able to call the shots in your career. You know, you're never gonna be able to secure yourself politically. And we've seen this so many times. I told you guys back in 2016, Sergei Kovalev and Gennady Golovkin, give it a couple of years and these guys will be set up. These guys will be, you know, the boxing establishment in America. As soon as they run into somebody that they're not supposed to beat, these, you know, all the ability that these guys have and all the resume that they've built up isn't going to matter because they don't have a home fan base. They don't have... A promoter who's going to look after them, you know, that they're basically at the mercy of American boxing, and I see the same thing happening to Bevel. I think that Dimitri Bevel is going to be set up at some point. I think they're just going to keep him in America. They're going to keep the put the uh, the marketing for him on the down low. You know, you're not going to give a shit about the the cards that he's fighting on. You're not going to give a shit about his opponents. I mean, fighting people like Isaac Chalemba and Jean Pascal. You know, relics of a previous age. It's, it's not doing anything for him, and um, which is why I say he shouldn't be fighting in America. What he should do is he should go back home, go back to Russia, get himself a Russian promoter, and build up his home fan base at home, okay, the dude's Russian, he's never gonna, he's not, <laughs> he's never gonna become a pay-per-view star in America, guys, it just ain't gonna happen, okay, he will have gotten robbed long before that happens, okay, so, I, I really think that whoever's managing Dimitri Bivol needs to, needs to take a long look at how his career is, is turning out, and they need to think long term, I mean, signing with Eddie Hearn isn't gonna do him any good, Signing with main events isn't going to do him any good. Fighting on HBO, who are on their way out now. You know, the, I, I believe the final card that he's on is going to be one of HBO's last cards before they, they pack it in with boxing. And um, it's not going to do him any good, okay? Why, why he's fighting in America, I, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me, okay? Um, I, I mean, I just don't get it, guys. I'm, I'm hearing rumors that he's going to sign with Eddie Hearn and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. You know, all he's ever going to be with one of those promoters is he's going to be an undercard attraction. And eventually he's going to be used to build up one of their fighters, you know, to build up one of these British prospects or one of these American, you know, one of these American hypes. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if for the next year or so they keep Bevel in America fighting on these cards against hopeless opposition like Jean Pascal and, and Isaac Chalemba. And then Andre Ward comes out of retirement, and then they basically stick him in with Andre Ward and set him up to lose. I, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if that's how his career pans out, because to be honest, guys, I mean, that seems to be the pattern, doesn't it? And, um, you know, it's the, sa it's the same issue with um, the other light heavyweight, Baturbiev. You know, in his last fight against, against Callum Johnson, which I believe was on the DAZN card with, with Eddie Hearn, it was Eddie Hearn running the show. Um, I, I couldn't pick a winner going into that fight. I had no idea. I, I saw it as a 50-50 fight, you know, because Baturbiev hasn't been managed properly. Um, you know, he, he doesn't have any promotional support at all. He's been fighting on these shitty cards on, in Canada, you know, on undercards that nobody gave a fuck about against shit opposition. Um, doesn't have a home fan base, you know, doesn't have any support whatsoever. So... Andy has a, a, a dodgy chin too, so I could easily have seen Callum Johnson knocking him out. Uh, that wasn't what happened, of course. Callum Johnson almost knocked him out, but got himself knocked out. And and if you, if you guys know what I'm talking about, 
because I'm kind of rambling here. I'm just saying that, 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 that these Russian guys, man, they, they really need to take their own career into their own hands. And th this is why I was, this is one of the reasons why I was such a big fan of Felix Sturm, because he's a guy who, he, I, you know, there's other fighters like this, but I'll use him in a, as an example, because he's a guy who took his career into his own hands. You know, he went over to America, got robbed, and, and I think in that moment he, he learned, he realized what the American boxing establishment was like. And he realized that when you're not supposed to win, you don't win. So he decided to go home to his home country and fought there for the rest of his career, pretty much, and, and became his own promoter, became like a box office star. And um, yeah, he, you know, he had a very successful career. And I think that other fighters need to learn from that. I think that a lot of these Eastern European fighters need to realize that how you become successful in boxing and how you build your brand is you need fans. You need a home fan base. You need people that are going to get behind you. Like, I was a big fan of Joe Calzaghe back in the day. You know, you know, he spent the vast majority of his career in the UK. You know, he didn't need to go fight in America because he had, um, you know, he had the fans over here. You know, he, he had, a, he was able to draw crowds over here. Same with Ricky Hatton and whatnot. So, you know, I th I think that that's the the best thing for these guys. You know, don't 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 be thinking so much about money and pay per views and all that shit. Think about being able to sell tickets. You know, think about being able to sell out an arena and and getting yourself a home fan base and a promoter who's gonna look out for you, who's gonna look after your interests. I think that's what some of these Eastern Europeans need to do, and I don't think that that's what Beevil's doing. I think that Beevil's allowing himself to be sold short, and I think that. Another few fights down the line, you know, he's just going to be another another Kovalev, basically, where, you know, he could have been great, but allowed himself to be set up and allowed his career to be dictated by other people, you know, left his career in the hands of others. So, yeah, this is a shit fight against Pascal. Not going to do anything for Dimitri Bivol's resume. If if he if he doesn't stop Pascal, I'll, I'll not be impressed. I'll, I'll, I'll view that as a as a shit performance, to be honest, if he doesn't stop him, um, it, and, and by, by stop him, I don't mean, like, dominates him for 11th round, for 11 rounds and gets him out in the 12th, he better stop him within 8 rounds, otherwise, to me, I'm not impressed, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about this one, and thanks for watching.